Hey guys, my name is Doe, and today I'll be talking about the new patch notes in Dauntless. It's going to be patch 0.6.10, and in these patch notes, there's a ton of stuff, but we're going to go ahead and start with the new axe changes. And to bear with me, it's going to be a pretty long section, but the new axe attack is going to be something called Flight of Ruin, which is going to replace the current Great Axe special. So your current Q will be replaced with Flight of Ruin, which Flight of Ruin will have a cooldown, and what it does is when you use your, your new Q, It'll throw the axe a far distance, damaging behemoths while traveling. Upon reaching a max distance, the axe will return to the slayer, damaging behemoths while it returns as well. After you have thrown your axe, you can recall it by pressing your Q again, and once it comes back to you, you will perform a overhead strike, and if you have full meter, you'll be granted a stack determination. Determination is basically how the current stacks work, the more you have, the more damage you do, so on and so forth. And the really neat part is, even if you don't have full meter and you do this attack, you will be granted meter charge. So it's a really nice way to either get determination stacks or to just do more damage to build towards more determination stacks. They also changed how attacks gain meter. So charge attacks now increase meter gain from subsequent attacks additively instead of overriding the previous charge value. The more charging you do, the more meter you will gain from attacks in that combo. And I don't know what that means entirely, but someone will tell me, and I apologize. There's always something in the patch notes that I don't understand. I'm very sorry. And uh, charge values have been adjusted to match this and account for Flight of Ruin's meter gain. So be wary. So I wasn't really expecting the sword changes, but we got them, and uh, let's see what they are. Extended the combo input window for swords, Slayers should now be able to more reliably input and chain combos. Increase the speed at which sword users are able to transition from the end of combos to the start of new combos. Rebalanced all combo damage, damage from a full secondary combo is now closer damage from a full primary combo, and crossover combo damage has been boosted. Don't know what that means, but uh, hooray. Reduce damage slightly on all attacks to balance out the combo speed increase, and reduce damage slightly on heavy attack slicers while in overdrive. To make you guys left click some more, because all you, everyone just right clicks with sword nowadays, man. It's like the opposite of repeaters. Like, repeaters always left click, swords are right clicking, whatever. Alright, for now, we will be skipping the quality of life stuff, but we will be coming back to it, but for right now, we're going to talk about some balance changes. This first balance change is something that the game really needed to be changed. So, they increased the amount of time it takes a behemoth to run away, which is hopefully going to make it so when you're speedrunning or trying to speedrun, behemoths don't just bomb a nose in like the first two minutes. And they also made it so behemoths that do run away have 20% health regained. So that should make it so you don't just like run up to a behemoth that ran away and kill it with a Drask Lantern or a single hit. Because that was getting kind of old. The last two balance changes are for Cunning, which will now deal a critical strike and it will no longer be represented by dealing double damage. So instead of, I'm pretty sure instead of getting like that, that double damage hit like, oh you did 2000 damage twice, it'll instead be 4000 damage. If you did a 2000, a 2000 damage hit, it'll be 4000 with a critical strike. I'm pretty sure. And I kind of like that more because having to look for when you got a, a proc on cunning was the worst. It's like, oh, is that is that the right proc? Like looking for two numbers like right next to each other was a pain. So just getting one big number will make it so you know you're getting that proc. And the cool part is that cunning will now have an increased proc rate. The increased proc rate will start off at 2% and have a maximum percent chance to proc at 15%. So at plus one, it's 2% and at plus six, it's 15%. Previously at plus one, it was 1% and plus six, it was 10%. So this is a pretty good buff in general. For, for fast weapons, this might be pretty sick. I'm looking at chain blades and repeaters being really cool and pretty spicy with these changes. Making our way back to the quality of life changes, I will not talk about every single change listed because there's about three pages worth of stuff to talk about. And there are a lot of important things that I might not mention but they are important to people that aren't me. So there's gonna be a lot of gamepad changes that I won't really mention because I don't play on the gamepad. I will be talking about the things that I find to be the most important to someone like me. So if you guys wanna go ahead and read over this on your own, you can, but the first change is gonna be one that affects the middleman aether dust situation. So instead of only having 200 aether dust, you will now have 2000. And to me, I don't really care about this change either way. I can, I can see like the good side of it, which isn't that great, but I can also see a really negative side, which is that new players might salvage cells they actually need, because they're new, and they don't know what's good or not, so they'll just be like, oh, I'm gonna salvage everything, because I can. So this could be a bad thing in that sense, but at the same time, it's not that big a deal, because new players shouldn't be doing that anyway. Just, uh, just read, like I don't, and you'll be fine. 
They also fixed a bug where Iceborne was not obtainable from breaking cores, and to remedy this bug, they will be putting Iceborne in the middleman in the next rotation. Hopefully it'll be a plus 3, I don't know. If it is, this is very good because, in all honesty, even all the cores that people did use, there's a really good chance they didn't really, they wouldn't have gotten anything good, right? Like, I opened up 90 cores when Molten came out, I got a plus 1. I was upset. So this is a pretty good way to fix this kind of issue. Slayers can no longer see rams while out on hunts, but you can still visit them in Ramsgate. And I'm kind of upset about the whole take them out of the hunts thing, because I wanted to pay some rams to ride some rams. Like, not in a weird way, but like to get to the behemoth quicker. You know, like, oh, I'm gonna pay some rams to ride a ram to go fight Rezakiri. Like, you know, like make it faster than walking. That's what I kind of wanted for a long time, but I guess that won't happen for a while. They also fixed the transmog texture bug, and I don't know how I feel about this because... It was pretty cool, but at the same time, you'd have some pretty trashy looking transmogs in some cases, and I think that all in all, I'm pretty happy it's gone, just because there were some transmogs that I just wanted to look original, and they didn't, and it would just look really ugly. A really good example of this is the Boreas Pike transmogged onto the Koshai Pike. That was disgusting. These next couple changes are pretty much my favorite in this whole patch when it comes to quality of life. So Slayers can now collect wild plants and mushrooms with a single button press, no more holding down the E key, and it don't stop there. Hunt Pass Gatherables can now be gathered with a single button press as well. And gathering wild plants and mushrooms will no longer slow your movement. That's awesome, and because of these changes, I will be making a video on how to gather certain materials really quickly. It'll probably be on Wrathwort and Skybloom because those are the two materials that I have the least of right now, and they're really important. Moving on, the airship display of Behemoth's strengths and weaknesses should be much easier to understand. And Heroic Valamir will now correctly spawn satellites when entering an enraged state. I was actually really happy this wasn't there, because those things are super annoying and they just make Valamir even more of a pain, which I really hope they look at Valamir soon, because that Behemoth is just all kinds of tilting. Fixed a bug where Shroud clones could have elemental status effects inflicted on them when they first spawned. I'm gonna miss this because I liked getting that young instant shock proc with the Jurassic Lantern. I kind of missed that a lot. And this will be the only thing I mentioned for gamepad users, but they can now open cores without reaching for a mouse. And the reason that I'm not gonna mention more about this is because for one, I don't even know what a gamepad really looks like, to be honest. So that's kind of where I'm at, but I'm glad you guys are getting some quality of life stuff Congrats, proud of you. This next one is addressing the weird interaction between the hammer blast dodge and the camera angle situation. And what happens is when you use your blast dodge, you get stuck in this repeater kind of view and it's not fun to be there with the hammer. I tell you what, the cave behind Ramsgate has been unblocked so the cool cave club meetings have resumed, brother. And the Wildland Flute emote song will now be more audible to people standing near the flute player. The last change is one of the most important. Okay, so players can now rotate their Slayer in the loadout screen. All you have to do is right click and drag, or if you're a player using a gamepad, you can use the right stick on the gamepad. So this is basically a direct buff to all the fashion Slayers out there. You can get a picture of the front and the back, the side, all that good stuff. Good stuff? Like this video. If you guys like the video, leave a like on the video, and if you want to, leave a comment down below. I will respond to it, and thank you all again for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.